A lot of emphasis uh, has been placed on, in baseball, has been placed on pitch velocity and, and how incredible it is that uh, not too long ago there was only a handful of, of pitchers that could uh, reach that uh, triple digit, that 100 mile an hour or plus speed. And even when they could reach that speed, they couldn't throw many pitches at that speed. Uh, you now see a lot of pitchers who are able to reach those speeds and to maintain those speeds throughout a large portion of the game. So it's not just a few pitches. So a lot of emphasis is, is being placed on how much velocity these pitchers can uh, create. So what I thought I would do today is just talk a little bit about the arm component, the arm dynamic to that process. Now, of course, like any process, uh, any biomechanical uh, activity, uh, sports activity, it's a whole body activity. And, and a lot of the keys really obviously are, are before the arm in, in how the lower body is being used and how the core is being used and the, the entire uh, dynamic. But I wanted to focus just a little bit on, on the arm dynamic, which is uh, a really uh, interesting dynamic and really an important dynamic to understand as far as how those velocities are being attained, how those velocities are being uh, developed and, and, and how efficiency of movement plays into not only the speed, but the ability to, to produce that speed um, for many pitches. Okay, the first thing to understand is that velocity, the ability to accelerate the arm, the most distal point of this system, the hand where the hand is releasing the ball, the, the ability to accelerate that, that part of the body really relies very heavily on the ability to internally rotate the shoulder. So that is a, 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 the first most important thing to understand is that that speed in an efficient movement pattern is mostly derived from your ability to internally rotate your shoulder. So you have external rotation and you have internal, internal rotation. It's the internal rotation component that allows uh, the pitcher to develop uh, very high distal end speed where they're letting go of the ball in a very short, very compressed uh, period of time. So how does this work? Okay. So let's talk about the uh, engagement or the loading process first. So if we take, if we look at our, our right-handed pitcher, pitcher looking at us, and we, t and we look at the mechanism of the shoulder to the elbow to the wrist. So if we look at this, what we'll see is that it, the internal external rotation mechanism uh, this becomes your axis of rotation, okay? And so the forearm holding on to the baseball um, is used in the loading process as a way to um, increase the dynamic stretch on the internal rotators of the shoulder, okay? So what happens is when you're loading, if we look at it from, from this perspective, now here's the person looking this direction, we look at, we look at the shoulder complex what happens is, is during the load process, the shoulder goes into external rotation. Here's them holding the ball. And this large uh, lever arm creates a high moment or high, uh, the ability to create a high load on the internal rotator. So why is that happening? Well, if my arm is up in this position, as it externally, as it goes from... Uh, uh, a position of more internal rotation or, or neutral into an externally rotated position, the, ac the internal rotators are being stretched. So in a dynamic movement like throwing a baseball, as those internal rotators get stretched rapidly, they're being preloaded very dynamically in a plyometric type way. They're being stretch shortened, the stretch part of the shortened. They're being preloaded by dynamic external rotation of the shoulder. Okay, so the external rotation of the shoulder with a large lever arm, which is creating a high amount of torque or uh, muscular force loading into the internal rotators. Okay, so when, when we throw, typically pitchers are landing somewhere in a position where as they turn, their arm is going to be close to this 90 degree position, almost 90, 90, 90 degrees of abduction and uh, 90 degrees of elbow bend. That elbow bend is critical, the, the, the less bend either this way or this way, the smaller the lever arm. When it's in a 90 degree angle, you get your maximum lever arm, which means you're gonna get your maximum load force on those internal rotators, okay? So that's the first thing. Now, as we turn the throw, the arm is in a, in fact, you've seen pictures of it, it's like 180, almost 180 degrees of external rotation. I can't force my arm, you know, past really 100 
statically. So you can imagine I'm going to get another 20 or 30, maybe even uh, upwards of 50 degrees of additional load on that structure just from the dynamic nature of rotating my upper torso on this mechanism here. Now after I'm done loading and I'm going to start to accelerate, the arm is now going to start its process of internally rotating. So the internal rotators go on stretch, they start to contract, they overcome the, the momentum of the arm going into external rotation, they start to internally rotate the shoulder. Okay, so now they start to internally rotate the shoulder, but the, the, the arm is still bent in roughly a 90 degree position, which means there's a large lever arm, a lot of inertia to overcome to get that, that arm uh, accelerating into its uh, uh, internal rotation speed, which is how we're delivering the baseball. So what happens then, so we've, we've now shifted into our internal rotation mechanism. The arm is still at about a 90 degree angle, a large inertia or large moment arm to try to overcome with that force. That force is building up and the speed starts to uh, increase as we start to internally rotate. And then what happens right as we're ready to release the ball? Just as we get to the point where we're going to release the ball, the elbow rapidly extends to almost, actually, to almost perfectly straight. There's only, if you look at uh, the amount of flexion, there's probably only about 10 to 15 degrees of flexion left in it. So it's almost perfectly straight now as you're letting go of the ball. So what happens? You've got all this force that's been created. You've got now this buildup of concentric force going from elongation or eccentric loading dynamic into shortening and concentric force being developed in the muscle. And now at the last second, right before we're ready to release that ball, we drop the moment arm or that lever down to virtually nothing. So the inertia goes away and we are able to now take all that force to at the last, literally the last few milliseconds, internally rotate the shoulder with now all that force built up and virtually no lever arm anymore. We're now going to straight. We can internally rotate that shoulder at dramatic speeds. You can probably average at a high level pitchers, probably averaging in the area of 6,000 degrees per second for that brief instant in time as the lever arm or that moment of inertia is decreased. Um, higher level pitchers can be even upwards of 8,000 degrees per second. Um, and so you have this really dramatic internal rotation speed right as the ball is being released. So you have this burst of internal rotation speed which creates distal end speed and also momentum as the, as the ball is being released out of the hand and accelerated towards the plate. So this mechanism is extremely important to be able to develop speed and guys who can throw hard do this extremely well and they're able to create very high internal rotation speeds by uh, uh, controlling this mechanism in a very efficient way. Um, however, you'll see a lot of pitchers who don't control this and certainly younger pitchers who don't do this very well. It's, a, it's, a, uh, um, it, it's to some degree, it's, it's a slightly awkward movement because you are putting a lot of stress on the anterior portion of the shoulder and obviously on the medial aspect of the elbow. Um, so a lot of times pitchers will um, uh, uh, recruit in slightly different patterns and you'll see younger pitchers in, in, in uh, particular rather than keep their arm essentially in line with their torso externally rotate and then internally rotate with extension letting go of the ball here they'll tend to want to push the elbow forward and throw more from an extension uh, uh, a horizontal abduction movement where they're extending the elbow almost like they're throwing a dart so they're flipping the ball and pulling the arm across their body um, you'll also see pitchers who rather than load their external rotators want to load the pecs, want to load across the chest because then they're going to get in this position and pull their body, pull their arm across their chest and sling. So there's, there's that, that dart throwing look that then they pull across and then there's the full arm almost kind of slinging action that you'll get. Those are failures to use the appropriate mechanism. So things we can learn about this. Number one, it's obviously incredibly important uh, at the high levels to have a control over this to not only throw fast but to throw efficiently. Throwing efficiently means being able to throw fast for more pitches during a game but also to do so with less stress on the joints. Obviously you can tell that there's a lot of stress being applied to these joints especially the anterior portion of the shoulder and the medial aspect of the um, uh, of the elbow and then you will have compressive uh, forces acting on the lateral side of the elbow and certainly some uh, uh, 
a posterior portion of the shoulder, but really you're talking about anterior and medial taking the brunt of those forces. So it's really important to be efficient. But no understanding this mechanism from um, a development standpoint is really important as well. So we can teach our kids as they develop uh, throwing uh, patterns and, and not just even pitching, just generally throwing patterns, how to load the body in a more appropriate position, use the shoulder and the internal rotation combined with body movements to throw the ball in a more natural pattern uh, as opposed to either pu pushing the elbow forward and wanting to use the extension of the elbow as a primary speed source or early extension of, of the elbow followed by essentially a horizontal abduction or horizontal uh, abduction um, or adduction across the body. So you're, you're, um, you're, you're able to teach the kids more efficiently how to use a more appropriate mechanism uh, for throwing the baseball. But I, th I think that this is, you know, at the extreme end of the, this is the most distal end of the system. Typically, I like to start describing these things from the, from the uh, more proximal side of things because they really drive the mechanism. Uh, and really, when you look at pitching as a whole, where these things start to break down is not at the shoulder and the arm, but really at how uh, a person uses their lower body and how they connect their lower body uh, with their upper body through their core and how they use that process to then load and accelerate the arm. So obviously the lower body and the core are extremely important, maybe to some degree more important in driving the process, but understanding the ultimate mechanism of accelerating the arm is critical and understanding what's important about it from a performance perspective, uh, from an injury mechanism perspective is all very important. Here's a quick view of what the uh, pitching or throwing arm dynamic actually looks like when you look at it from a 3D biomechanical uh, perspective. What you see here in this graph is um, the arm dynamic that I just described only in graphical format using uh, six degree of freedom, three dimensional motion capture, motion analysis. This line here indicates foot contact. So this is as the pitcher puts their foot down or as the thrower puts their foot down uh, off of a crow hop or, or stride to begin the throwing process itself. The green line in this graph will indicate uh, uh, elbow flexion extension speeds. Extension speeds will be positive, flexion speeds will be negative. Um, the black line then indicates uh, internal external rotation. Our external rotation values will be negative, our internal rotation values will be positive. When we look here at this vertical line, we're looking at release of the ball uh, as, the, as the pitcher or the thrower releases the ball towards whatever the intended target. So what you'll see is, is that the arm, typically in, a, in an efficient movement, the, the pitcher or the thrower lands in close to that 90 degree elbow flexion position. So you don't get a lot of speed component with respect to elbow. You will, however, see a fairly dynamic external rotation velocity, which is the load portion of the process where we talked about the internal rotators actually loading up, being eccentrically stretched, uh, dynamically pulled to create uh, potential energy, to, to load those muscles to be able to create force when they eventually start to shorten or contract. As you reach your peak extension, I'm sorry, uh, external rotation values, you will start to extend the elbow as the arm then will start to move, transition into uh, uh, internal rotation from external rotation. So you'll see right here, this is where the elbow or where the, where the shoulder transitions from uh, external rotation loading on the negative to internal rotation acceleration on the positive. And as that occurs, just before that occurs, you'll see the elbow starts to extend. Right as you reach that point where the elbow, or I'm sorry, where the shoulder internally accelerates, where you reach now, you've overcome your uh, momentum of the external rotation and now you're going to start to internally rotate right here at about frame 33. And we just draw a quick line to demonstrate that. Now you're going to see a rapid extension. So you're going to get an extension speed of almost 2,500 degrees per second at the elbow, which then facilitates a rapid internal rotation speed at the shoulder right through ball release. So you have this picture reaching 
somewhere in the area of about 6,500 degrees per second. At the ball, as the ball is released, you get a little extra, almost upwards of 7,500, and then you have deceleration of the of the shoulder mechanism uh, to try to, to obviously decelerate uh, the arm and the body. Um, but this is what it looks like. This is an efficient high-level throw, and this is what it looks like from a biomechanics perspective. So it gives you some idea of what uh, kind of speeds these athletes are attaining and the coordination it takes to create that, that kind of speed. Um, what you have to appreciate is that uh, this is high-speed video shot at 240 frames a second. So as you might imagine, this uh, little portion of foot contact to ball release is well less than a second, in fact, well less than even half a second. You have a very short, very compressed period of time. So if you consider just the time from maximum load to maximum internal rotation speed, you're talking about literally fractions of a second. So the, the dynamics of the arm are very important to not only create speed, but to also create an efficient movement, which can be done repeatedly with uh, minimal stress. Obviously, throwing a baseball is stressful to the joints, especially at high rates of speed, um, high force production, stuff like that. But the more efficient the movement and the better the joint positions during that ballistic movement, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the more that stress value is reduced on the joints, um, which again, not only allows the pitcher to flow fast and throw fast repeatedly, but to do so uh, without um, uh, overloading the joints uh, and experiencing injury.